I'm so grateful for those that create life hacks and bring us little golden nuggets to just enrich and enhance our lives. One great book in the Bible that just brings us all these one-liners is the book of Proverbs. I encourage you, read a Proverbs a day. A Proverbs a day keeps the devil away. And it certainly keeps ignorance away, but there's 31 Proverbs. And so you can read one each and every day. And I promise you that when you do this over and over, that means you'll go through the book of Proverbs 12 times in one year, and you will be all the wiser for it. Well, thank you for joining us. We have this holiday that is looming over us. It's not a biblical holiday or a Christian holiday or a Hebrew holiday. It's kind of like a Gregorian calendar, Roman, Greek kind of holiday, but it's worth talking about because it's called Valentine's Day. It's all about love. Some of you might ignore it. Some of you might feel pressure. Some of you might call it Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day, or I call it God in times day but you know god wants to show us his love each and every day a lot of us are struggling in the love department and that is why i brought an expert in this field and he helps us so much and that is dr vince callahan thank Hi. you for thank coming you. back absolutely <laughs> thank you for having me you are like a plethora of information <laughs> so on a, just about any emotional topic any feelings, any neurological, you can, you can speak to it. I had a, a friend yesterday say that I was like a jukebox. If you put in a quarter, I can talk for an hour on anything. <laughs> I love and it's it. true. It's true. I can. Well, that comes from your anointing. It comes from life experience. It comes from the school of hard knocks. Yes, it does. And you've studied to show yourself approved. So Amen. not only have you gone through all this life experience, but you also have your doctorate from Regent University. Yes. And uh, you've got a lot of knowledge. I try. Um, the biggest source of my knowledge is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, though, absolutely. To be honest, because a lot of days I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I kind of ask him for help. And he tells me and he gives me the right words to say yeah. and the right things to do and to minister. And, and that's really been the heart of everything I've done for 30. This is your 38. Wow. Of counseling. Well, he is our divine teacher, our divine instructor, our divine counselor, our divine therapist. That's right. So he helps us. That's right. Plus, you have a junior Holy Spirit named Donna. I <laughs> <laughs> she, she's his assistant yes, and, uh, yes. and helps you. And she's amazing. She is my life rock. We have been through, we've been married for almost 15 years and we have um, been so much in love. The Lord really supernaturally gave us that love almost 15 years ago. And uh, we're actually celebrating uh, that she has just come through a little health scare. Um, but the good news is that she's cancer free and we are excited because... <laughs> That was, that was a tough one. It was. And um, what was even more tough about that, just to, to go here for a second, about three months ago, I, I heard what I thought was from the Lord that she had cancer and that she wouldn't come off the table. Wow. And for three months, I have warred against that and warred against that and really been tormented. And I, I'm pretty good at hearing from the Lord. I've been, I've been a Christian for 54 years. Yeah. So I know the voice of the Lord, but this time it, it, it just, it sounded like him, but it wasn't him because of how it was tormented and how I wrestled with this thing. Whether or not that was the whole purpose of it, whether or not the Lord's saying, look, let me teach you what real intercession's about. That's right. And how to do that because I've got this, but, but you know, you need to go through this. So I did and we're on the other side Praise and God. life is wonderful. Praise God. You know, Dr. Vince, I think sometimes too, at least in my own experience, I sometimes think the Holy Spirit puts his finger on a trigger, a fear, a trauma, and to heal you from it. Mm -hmm. And so it could have been that there was something lodged deep inside you mm -hmm. that had fear about the loss of a spouse or the loss of someone very close to you. Mm -hmm. And either way, I got through it. Amen. And we're on the other side. Praise God. And life is good. <laughs> life is good. Okay, let's talk about love. Let's do Isn't it. Isn't that song, Let's Talk About Love, yeah. Baby? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I know one-liners from just a, you know, a lot of songs, but don't know who sung them. And so if those lyrics were offensive, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But let's talk about love. <laughs> sure. You know, um, 
Marriage is an institution. Yes, it is. Love is blind. Yes, it is. Therefore, marriage is an institution for the blind. <laughs> That's good. I like Most that. Most people, uh, sometimes we go on the feeling of love mm -hmm. when really love is a decision. It is. A choice. And it's a choice. Yeah. And love should be easy. Yeah. Being in love with someone shouldn't be hard work. You should be able to enjoy you know, it's kind of like the scripture. It says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Loving God shouldn't be difficult. It should be easy for us to do that because we care and, and our hearts are generated there. And the person that we're with should be the same thing. Yeah. It should be an easy thing. I mean, I don't have to work at loving my wife. I don't have to dread giving her a kiss in the morning. I want to do those things yeah. because my heart follows my feelings. And you know, I, I didn't say it the other way. I didn't say my feelings follow my heart. It's good. Because my feelings are really about choices that I make and information that goes into my brain. And so for that, uh, it's, it's easy to love. Well, Vince, that is truth. And that is your reality and your experience. And I know everyone listening is saying, I want that to be re my reality. And yet... My relationship is not easy. I, it's not easy to love the one I'm with. That's another song, right? Yes. You can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Right. But we need to love the one we're with because we choose to, right? Right. But how, what, how do we love when it's hard, when the relationship is hard? Well, first, we've got to be aware of what's really going on. Yeah. Um, it's amazing to me how many couples are not aware of what's going on in their marriage. Um, I, I referenced the scripture where Samson was going to destroy the, the temple there. Yeah. And one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible says that he didn't realize that the Spirit of God had left had him. Departed. That's right. And a lot of couples were going through their everyday routine and going through their everyday life, and they don't even realize how far apart they are. Yeah. Eh, I'm just married. Yeah. You, know, you pick up the kids, you get the groceries, you do this, you do that. And it's amazing to me in counseling, I ask couples, well, when was the last time you had a kiss? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Or when was the last time you were intimate? Yeah. And they'll say, uh, six months, a year. And I'll go, really? Yeah. Do you miss that connection? Yeah. And they'll go, I hadn't really thought about it. Yeah. When you get to a place in a marriage that you don't miss love, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in real trouble because this is the person that you're one with. This is the person that's part you. Yeah. And you should miss the lack of connection. And so if marriage is tough, if life is tough with that person, then it's time to maybe get some professional help in there. Yeah. I know a really good counselor. Really? <laughs> I can't one of the imagine. best I've heard. One of the best I've <laughs> there heard. There you go. But it's time to get somebody in there with you to yeah. say, what's going on and how did you get here? Because sometimes um, we get into a place of unmet needs. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go here for just a second. Go ahead. Sometimes, you know, we, we are afraid to share what our needs really are with our spouse, that person that we're with, yeah. because we're afraid they're not going to meet those needs. We've put ourselves out there and um, nothing happened. Yeah. I got nothing in return. So why try? Why yeah. try? And you get stuck yeah. in that. and You become afraid that, well, maybe I, my needs won't get met anyway because they really don't care. When I have couples that have lost that love, if you will, have lost that loving feeling, yeah. I can do a song. You, yeah, you match it with you. Yeah, that yeah. I eat Top Gun. But um, when, when you get to that place, one of the simplest things that I tell couples, remember when you were dating? Mm -hmm. What did you do to fall in love when you were dating? Well, we talked on the phone. All night long. All night long. You we drove held hands. 100 miles to we, see we, each other. That's right. We held hands. Yeah. We kissed. We hugged. Okay. We if asked powerful questions. We had, yes. And, and we, we didn't ask the yes or no questions. Yeah. We wanted to hear the heart and we were genuinely interested. Yeah. And that connection created that physical desire, I wanna be with you the rest of my life. Yeah. So I tell couples, go back to the basics. Yeah. Go back to the simplicity of doing the little small things 
yeah. that got you here in the first yeah. place. Because if it worked the first time, yeah. it's going to work the second time. Yeah. And they just kind of look at me like deer in the headlights, like, I never thought about yeah. that. So do you think love can be resurrected? I believe, I've had some hard cases in my yeah. life the last 38 years. Yeah. I've had some couples that didn't like each other anymore. Yeah. And one of them was, uh, I don't want to be near you. And the other one's like, I I've got to change and back and forth and back and forth. I believe absolutely 100% that love can be resurrected if you'll do the work to resurrect it. Yeah. If you will put the time and effort into it, if you will do the little things yeah. that you have to do, then yes, you can. It can be resurrected, it can be saved, and it can be better than it ever was. Yeah. Well, God is an expert, Dr. Vince, in restoring broken things. Mm -hmm. He is an expert at bringing things full circle. And a mm. lot of times to restore lost love or forgotten love is to die to self, mm -hmm. die to your own needs mm -hmm. and really get God's heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we live a crucified life then, and we ask the Holy Spirit to just invade our inner being with his love to distribute to everyone, that our spouse should be the first recipient. Should be. Yeah. And there's some simple things that you can do. Like what? Um, well, one of the things that I teach couples is how to actually talk to each other. Yeah. Most couples have a disagreement. Yeah. They start going back and forth. Yeah. Both are talking at the same time. Yeah. Nobody's listening. Everyone and wants it, to be heard. <clears throat> everybody wants to be heard at the same time. And then it turns into an argument. And the argument gets worse and gets worse. Yeah. And then... Okay, we just forget it. And two or three days go by, and then, okay, well, maybe we can talk again. So I try to get couples to start actually talking to each other. Yeah. And the first thing that you've got to learn to do when someone hurts your feelings is say, ouch. Yeah. If you go to the dentist, yeah. and he hits a nerve, you raise your hand, and you say, ow, that yeah. hurt. Yeah. Right? That's the indicator. That's the indicator. And he goes, oh, okay, and he stops. Yeah. Gives you a little more Novocaine, does whatever, but he stops that. People in a relationship need to be able to say, ouch, what you just said hurt me. Yeah. And most people don't even do that simple of a thing. Do you think that's pride? Do you think it's fear? Why won't people say ouch? I think it's fear. Okay. I think it's the, you don't care about me anyway because of all the things that you've done. Yeah. What's going to make this different? But I have couples where... You know, I tell them, look, just try this. Yeah. Try this at home. Say, Vince said to do this. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> try ouch. Raise your hand and say, ouch, that hurt. When you do that with your spouse, nine times out of ten, they're going to stop what they're doing. You just interrupted the neural pathway, Go going back to the brain. You interrupted yes. that circuit. You're going to stop that pathway. And the, that person is going to say, well, what do you mean, ouch? This is where you say, what you just said to me sounded like, this that's good but is this what you meant to say to me yeah because now you've got an opportunity to take and clean it up this literally takes five minutes yeah i teach couples how to do this and then once they get into a pattern one of them will say ouch the other spouse will say well, what do you mean what what what's wrong yeah. well you said that what i heard you say was yeah is that what you meant to say to me Usually that person will say, no, that's not what I meant at all. I meant this. And it's called cleaning it up. That's good. It takes five minutes. And it doesn't turn into a fight or an argument. Or a five-day shutdown. Or a five-day shutdown. Or a five-month turn, turn your back on. Right. It turns into, oh, we can fix this. Yeah. We can communicate. Go ahead. And men and, and women speak a different language. And so we really need to acknowledge ouches. Because, I mean, I live with all men. I have five sons and eight grandsons and a husband. This year will be 30 years of 30 years marriage. And we, we, we misunderstand each other all the time. But if we don't clean up the messes and get clarity in the moment, like you said, if we don't stop, drop, and roll, so to speak, right. then, it can, it, then you open the door for the enemy, for offense and bitterness and misunderstanding and... And, and more and more and more. Every time that you don't acknowledge what's going on inside, 
and you don't do something about it, it's like stacking a brick. Yeah. Wide and high. And one day, after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right. you've got this brick wall that's 10 feet tall. You can't see the other person. You don't yeah. see who they are. You can't hear them. And you wake up and go, how did we get here? Yeah. What happened to the feelings of our relationship? Yeah. Love does have a feeling attached to it. It does. Because that's the way God made it. Yeah. God would rather us live an oxytocin life than he would a <laughs> cortisol life. Yes. And I'll explain what that means. Cortisol, as we've talked about, is the stress hormone. Oof, I don't like cortisol. Nobody does. Oxytocin happens when you get a hug, when you connect with somebody, when you bond with them, you relax your entire brain. Mm. And it's an oxytocin moment. Yeah. To me, that's thriving in a relationship. Yeah. That's what being in love is all about. It is. And I, you know, I want to also just reference your book because it's, it unpacks all of the things about our brain and really helps. It's called The Neural Classroom Restoring the Stressed Brain. Yes. And if we live in the United States of America, and we've got a stressed brain. Yeah. But God, and through your work in this field, God wants to touch the chemicals in our brain he so does. that we can receive the promises in the Word of God. Yes, we need to get that stuff out of the way yeah. so that we can. Level up. Level up. Yeah. Good way of putting it. Well, um, if you're watching, you can go and grab this book on drvincecallahan.com. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and go on there. There's so much on there. There's more books coming. There's more books coming. The book I'm working on currently is called The Drama-Free Home. Oh, boy, that is going to be powerful. And it talks about what drama really is in the home, yeah. but how to live a drama-free life. Yeah. You don't have to live a life full of strife. Yeah. You don't have to have arguments. You don't have to be selfish. You don't have to give up you. There, there's hope. You can fix this. Yeah. And then a third one I'm working on that will come out probably in the summer is called The Family Handbook. That's awesome. And it's a nice little 100 devotionals, a little simple statements and things that the Word says about you and your family and things that you could work on together. Yeah. So, Well, you know, the family is our first mission field. You know, our, our marriages are essential. The two are one. That's where it starts and that agreement. And then it flows down into our family. That's our legacy. It is. And so, you know, all the time, sometimes believers are asking God for the nations, you know, Psalm 2, ask of me and I'll give you the nation. Well, my nation, I have the nation of Rob, I have the nation of Zachary, Josiah, Jonathan, the nation of Alvin and Dwayne, the nation of all my grandchildren. That's my first nation. Mm -hmm. And when our family nation doesn't feel safe or we feel misunderstood or we feel that wall, sometimes what we do is we go and look beyond that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why this show is so important and it is one of the greatest things that we can do on this Valentine week is to ask, cry out to God and ask Him to restore love in relationships where it's stuck or wax cold or is non-existent that he can resurrect it. And I, I just want you to pray with someone watching, speak to someone watching, and, and just impart that hope that Holy Spirit wants to give, Dr. Vince. Well, the first thing that I will say is to the husbands, go home and look into your wife's eyes. And if you don't see joy and you see anything but joy, understand it's probably because you did something to put that there. And that's the first point of prayer, is to say, Lord, forgive me I repent for not having put my life into my wife so that there's joy in her eyes. And so, Father, I just pray for families over this network. I pray, Lord, that you would instill love and peace and harmony and that you would stop the strife, Lord, that you would give them hope and that you would know, let them know, Lord, if, if there's someone who's watching, that they're just at the end of it. And, Lord, if you don't speak to me, then I'm done and I'm out. Hear the word of the Lord, there's hope. You don't have to end it. You don't have to say this is over. You don't have to do any of those things. You can find hope. It's out there. Find a good counselor. Yeah. Find a good counselor. There's good and great counselors out there. And I'll just plug, you know, at the end of this prayer, I'll plug my website okay. a little bit, vincecallahan.com. Um, if, if I can help you, reach out to us. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to do that. And, um, and I'm sorry, that was a strange okay. prayer, but that's all right. 
Well, you prayed, you released the word, and then you said, this is how you can get in touch with me if you need more help. And listen, God sends us help. In Psalms, it says that he sends help from the sanctuary, not from the world. He sends us help from men and women of God that have a proven track record, that have moral character and integrity. And Dr. Vince is one of those people. And so I encourage you to connect with him. Now, I do want to say, maybe you're watching this show and you're like, well, I'm listening, but I'm not in a relationship. King David also said that God will give us the very desires of our heart. And until that relationship comes into your life, single woman, divorced woman, widow woman, if you are desiring a spouse, the greatest thing that you can do is prepare yourself, get your heart healed, get in the word, immerse yourself in, in, in scripture, and then know that Jesus, Yeshua, he is the perfect mate. He is your bridegroom. He calls you his beloved. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Uh, that's what my wedding band says in Hebrew. And listen, he can comfort you, love you, and fill the longings of your heart in a way that is supernatural if you invite him and if you let him, if you'll receive it. And then listen, be in fellowship. Be with other girls. Be with other ladies. Be on prayer teams. There's so much we can do. Paul did say, look, if you can be single, do it, because then you can fully devote your life to serving the Lord. But most of us, that's not a calling, and we are in relationships. And so listen, prioritize your relationship on this holiday and this week when we're focusing on love. Ask him to renew your first love. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God, his love, his gifts, his fruits, and his righteousness. Then all these other things will be added unto you. And that is my prayer for you. And that's God's prayer. It's Dr. Vince's prayer. Listen, go to his website, grab that book, look forward to future books that he's coming out with. And listen, love well, let Jesus love you well. He already has, and you love well. Thank you for watching Come Home. Thank you for supporting and praying for this program. And we will see you next time. I'm Jen Mallon.